Up next, Halloween Group Build, Part 4. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from SciFiAndesy.com and welcome to another Modelers Tube video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about our Sci-Fi Annecy Halloween group build. And this is part four that I'm building the Mobius Models Grim Reaper and I think it's one ninth scale. But we're building him and a bunch of other people have already finished or are building their Halloween group build models. There's still plenty of time to get into the group build. If you want to build with us, just go over to scifianacy.com, which is right over here. Sign up at the site and join the group and build away. So we'll have a bunch of cool builds. There's actually some that are already done and really, really nice. So I guess that's enough yammering out of me. Let's get over to the bench and check out what we got going on. So let's show you what we've been up to on the Grim Reaper kit. We got them all seamed up, primed and painted. I was gonna change the rope around his waist, but I decided not to go that route. I'm actually gonna use the kit provided piece because the rope I got, it's sea or ship rigging and how it laid down, I didn't like it. The knot was coming out too big and it just, it just didn't look right. So we're gonna go with the kit provided part, which will look fine. We'll paint that up, highlight it and all that good stuff. I painted the body, the arms, the hood, and all that other stuff in NATO black from Tamiya. I kind of like this color better than regular flat black. The flat black to me is just very, very dark. And this one is more of a blackish gray, and it kind of looks more like cloth. The flat black looks good, but I prefer this color over that. So we went with the NATO flat black on everything, and it's actually gonna be easier to get in the creases with a darker color and let that stand out more then with just regular black, you really couldn't get in there to make anything darker and bring out the creases and everything in his tunic or whatever you call this thing that he's wearing. So let's show you a couple more parts on what we're doing with him. Here's one of his arms. Again, it's the NATO flat black and we're gonna get in all those creases and get that darkened up. This way you can see the folds and everything in there. And of course he has no legs, he just has two arms and that we're gonna paint dark in here to give it the shadow effect just like you can see now it's dark we're just going to make it darker so you really can't see anything inside his arms he's all seamed up no more seams on his arms or anything like that now it's just to get the creases darkened up and get a little more effect on there and here's his other arm again all seamed up primed painted ready to go for the next round to get some some darkness in those creases and and bring it out just a little bit more and here's his shoulders and his cape. Again, all primed up, seamed up. And what I like about the bigger kits, you can see with the light, it actually makes its own shadows and highlights. So you don't have to really go too crazy on these. Natural lighting will bring out all of that. And again, inside the hood, we're gonna make that darker. This way it gives it a nice effect of darkness in there, maybe even a little more creepier. And here's the Grim Reaper skull. I painted him in bone white from Game Air by Vallejo. And then we used Vallejo wash. It's an umber wash. I just dropped a whole bunch in his eye sockets and let that dry nice and dark. And the same thing over here. And then I wiped it all down. He's got a little gash in his forehead there that also took the wash in there. And then it's hard to see. I lightened up the Game Air bone white with a little bit of Vallejo white. And above his eyebrow bones here, we highlighted that a little on his cheekbones, definitely on the tip of his nose and some down here on his chin, just to give him a little bit more highlights. And then we're gonna slap him in the hood once we get that all done. And hopefully it looks well. Ooh. And here's the tree, kind of hard to get everything in on the lens itself. He's kind of, kind of big. So we put him together, we sealed him up. I wish the lighting wasn't really reflecting off him. It's got a nice matte coat on it but it's kind of reflecting off the light. If you're in my house right now, it would be dead flat. But I painted this guy in sandy brown first, let that dry, and then I used enamel wash from MIG, and that was the Starship wash. I went over the tree with that, and then I highlighted with a dark earth and a, a green yellow olive in some spots. And then also once this is done and ready for the base, we're gonna put some moss up the side over here and a couple little hanging things probably from here or here get that done up and i don't think i'm going to be using the tombstones that come with this we're going to try to 3d print up some creepier headstones to put along with this it might only be one 
we'll have to see. But these are the parts that we got done. So I'm going to do a little work and I'll be right back. So for the next part of the build, I'm actually going to be moving over to my Badger Chrome. And the reason I'm moving over to this airbrush is to do the detail painting. The Patriot 105 is a really good airbrush and it's pretty much basically the same as this guy. The difference is, is when I use the Patriot 105, I don't have the control of keeping the pressure, or I shouldn't say the pressure, the amount of spray coming out the same exact every time as I do with the Patriot 105. Back here, you'll see a little knob, and this is an adjustment knob. When you adjust this, it's going to bring back this pin on the inside, and every time I go to spray, it's always going to lock at that same position, so I can keep the same spray pattern out of the tip every time without worrying about where I was and how I was doing it. I'll show you this and how the spray patterns work in a separate video. Modeling Mishap 1001. So. I had everything shaded in, the natal black was on, it was looking good. I sprayed the Mr. Surfacer or Mr. Super Clear Matte and one, it darkened up the color too much which I didn't like but the main thing that happened was the matte did not stay matte, it stayed super shiny. So he took a bath in super clean and we're back down to primer. So. Once it's dry, the inside's not dry, the outside's dry. You gotta wait till probably tomorrow or the day after. And this guy will get reprimed and we'll start over on him. So let's do something else for the rest of this video. Oh, and for my friends that are new to the hobby or beginners, this happens to all of us. No matter how long you've been building, something is gonna happen. And like I always say, if somebody tells you nothing happened and their builds are always perfect, they are lying out their ass. So. If it happens to you, just fix what you gotta fix, like I did, strip it down and start over. Don't go breaking the model or anything like that. You spent a lot of money and time to get to the point. It takes a couple more days to get where you gotta go. Just do what you gotta do. Save the model and start over again. So you ever have a piece come off the runner or you cut it off and you were thinking, eh, I can paint it easily without it being on the runner and then you realize you can't hold it with an alligator clip to paint it. Can't hold it in your hand either. Well. I do that all the time and what I do is I just take a little barbecue stick over here, a skewer, and I crazy glue it or this is actually Gorilla glued to the skewer and now I can paint it and once it's painted I could just snap it right off or cut it right at the end of the stick here and we got a painted piece without having to hold it in our hands or find a crazy way to do it and probably mess it up and have to clean it off like I usually do, but now this is an easy way I can prime it. I can paint it now and I can do everything I have to. Okay, the first thing I did was prime it and now I went with the Vallejo Bone White on it. Sorry if it's a little blurry, kind of hard to keep it in uh, focus here. So next up, I'm gonna do a clear coat with Mr. Super Clear Gloss and then I'll let that dry and then I'll be back. And after the gloss coat, now his hand is all washed up with Vallejo Umber Wash. All right, here's the hand all done up. The wash is taken off, put the highlights on his knuckles. All that's done over there, so we have that guy and he can go on his body. Sorry, it's getting a little blurry, but that's pretty much it for now. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed what you were watching. And if you haven't yet, please come over to Modeler's Tube right here. Sign up, start posting your videos. We've got a bunch of people over there. We got uh, almost 200 registered members and over 700 videos already either linked in from another third party site or uploaded to the site. So come over, join the community, have a good time and let everybody see what you're doing. As always, if you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comments section below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So thanks again everybody for stopping by. Take care and bye-bye.